My name is Elena. I'm an Italian painter. I live in Germany and uh, I paint in various techniques. Today I'm going to paint a water landscape with you. I will now show you what colours I'm going to use. So I am going to use a combination between the inks and the Schmincke Academy acryl colour. I selected a Prussian blue, a burnt umber, phthalo blue, lemon yellow and titanium white. So I'm going to prime the canvas with um, ochre. So I'm using ochre without diluting it with water and without thinning with white. Firstly, it looks very dark. It will even dark, darken later because acrylic colors do darken. If I start with a plain white canvas and I'm using very light colors, I don't know if I'm covering enough for, or if the color will be light because the canvas is still to see. My canvas is now dry, so it does appear uh, fairly dark. But that's okay, because the colours that we're going to use on top are going to be covering. So what I'm going to do now is a drawing, a very uh, simple sketch with charcoal. I use it instead of a pencil because it is hard-pressed pigment and uh, it will be washed away by the acrylic colours when I then paint on top. One thing that is very important uh, when you paint waves is to understand the anatomy of waves. You have uh, uh, something like well, let's say a background, and the background of the waves will always have like a yeah, horizontal direction here. An upper part here, this is gonna be the lower end here. This is flat here on the ground, and this is the background. And this is my wave. So here I need to develop the anatomy of the wave. So I will say that my wave develops from the left corner bottom to the right upper corner. So this is the direction, which means that I'm going to paint all this part here going upwards. From the bottom, this is the direction. From the top, this will be the direction here. So it's kind of a loop. So it goes up and then it goes down. And in the end, we can look at it as something like this. So these are the colors that I'm going to use in this painting. I'm not going to thinnen the colors with water. I'm just going to use them pure. And what I'm going to do is mix the colors as I proceed. I never mix the colors on the canvas. I only mix them on my palette. One of the important things is to never go against the shapes. So if the shapes of the waves will be going in this way, I'm not going to paint my background like this. So this is very important. One, see, one thing that you see while I'm painting, by the way, is that these traces of black charcoal are disappearing. They get integrated in the color, so there's nothing left, which means that I will not have a drawing underneath once I'm done. So this is how I am going to do it. So I'm just going to show you very roughly the underpainting phase now. So this is the upper part. So the upper part has been painted like this. And I'm going to already integrate in this part little waves wet in wet, because this will allow me to have a very good layering of the color. And I'm just adding titanium white to all this. There's nothing else involved. And now I'm going to start with this part, the central part of the waves. So we need to understand the anatomy. So where is our light source coming from? So I would say that the light comes from above here. So this means that this part here will be all in light. So this part here is lifted from above. So it's a very thin layer of, of uh, it's a very thin layer of water. For this reason, this part here will as well be very light. Whilst on the other hand, this part here underneath will be actually extremely dark because that's where the shadows are cast from above. This is the part where the foam will be. Something very nice about the waves is this lovely turquoise color that tends to yellow and it's very glowing. Now for this lovely turquoise color, I am going to use a very nice pigment, which is called phthalo. I tend to mix it with lemon yellow. And you see that it will turn lightly to a greenish blue. And this is the color that I want. So one thing you should not forget, the acrylic colors tend to dry darker. So if, if you think that this is exactly the color that you want in the end, then you're wrong because 
you need to mix it a little lighter. So I am going to apply the color like this. The wave is going to lift up here and just crash on this side, on the left side. So this part here will stay just here above this ridge. Is it not amazing how beautiful this all blends together? And thinking that I am using only four colors so far. So this is the lower part of the wave. And I have painted it as a curve. This part here is going to be painted the other way around. Here, it's very rough, so these outlines here, this part here, it's, it's okay if it's rough because this is the first part. What, you, what is really not nice to see when you paint is when you have like shapes that you can recognize. You should not be able to recognize patterns. Waves are wild, they don't create patterns. Here I'm starting to go in a different kind of shape and in a different color, a kind of color as well, because this is where the foam, the sea foam will be. And for this reason, I have to start changing the color into the color of the foam. And one thing that most of the people don't regard is that foam is not white. So I will start with blue and gray. Here again, the water is not climbing in, into the wave. This is again flat here. So here I am going to paint with using a different direction. I was born on an island called Sardinia in Italy. So it is, water is my element. I love painting water landscapes and I love sitting also in the winter by the sea and observing the waves and painting the waves and sea foam and breaking waves and gushing. Something that has a little bit to do with meditation as well. So there you are. That is the first layer, a very, very rough underpainting of my seascape. And well, all the details will come here on top. I have just decided to integrate another color in my palette. And this is this beautiful ultramarine blue. So now I wanted to have a gray that has a little bit of a cooler shade. For this reason, instead of using Prussian blue, I am using now ultramarine for the shadows here. So this looks very dark to me. It's going to be way lighter. So that's it with titanium white. And by the way, I'm using a different brush right now. And this is one of my favorite brushes for this kind of uh, landscape painting. And it's a filbert brush. So now it has a lot of color on it. So you don't really recognize the tip, but a filbert brush means that it's a little bit round. So it's something between a flat brush and a round brush. Okay, now I'm going to go on top of this composition here with uh, a second layer. So this is extremely rough. You can still see part of my ochre um, background here. Don't try to achieve in one layer everything as it should look like. It will not work. Do apply at least two layers of paint. And for the next step I am going to introduce you to the inks. The acrylic inks are an amazing product. They come in little bottles like this and uh, they're very handy to use with a dropper and uh, important is that you need to mix them and you can hear from the noise that they make there's something in there it's a little metal ball that helps you to mix them which is very very practical so you just open them up and this is how they look like so you have this dropper and you just drop a couple of things here it's extremely fluid so just watch out that it does not leak where you don't want it to be what is amazing is that they are extremely pigmented and you see it's exactly the same color, which is really cool. In this second layer, I am going to 
integrate in my painting all those beautiful patterns that normally uh, develop here in this area and here all these parts will be painted wet in wet so because again if you paint something on top it, it will look like a pattern that is sticking out so you have to integrate them inside the painting for them to look natural so i am going to use now a combination between the inks and the, the regular acrylic colors so i'm going to start with yellow and white and a little bit of phthalo blue I want it to flow in here with very, very thin uh, lines. Earlier, I would have done it by diluting with some water, and now with these inks, I don't need it anymore. So I can get some ink here, and they have already the consistency that I need for them to be applied. I am using a filbert brush. I'm going to turn it like this here, so that sometimes it looks thinner, sometimes it looks thicker here, a little bit in this way. And I'm always turning the brush like this, because what, is, what you definitely don't find on waves are strokes. You should not find on waves are strokes that look all the same. Okay, so that is the lower part of the wave, and now you see how rough all the rest looks. The thing I'm going to do is work on this section, which is still just water, and then work on the uh, sea foam. And, yeah. So and now what, what happens here is that I am painting now values that are a little bit lighter than my background, and I'm brushing them on top of the green parts as well. And I do leave a couple of holes here and there, not going everywhere, just in some parts where the foam is so that it doesn't look like a stripe anymore so you see it has already developed a little bit of a foam structure here and now I'm going to go on top so what here is important is to understand the light source and to just paint a couple of tips of the foam here and now I am going to show you how to go on with using the inks and uh, to obtain a little bit more wiggly and free effects. Looking at these two parts this looks really incomplete it's like and very static still because those very light elements that come towards us uh, are, are not th there yet. We have just the foam with the structure uh, but it's still very grey and it's not it's not coming out as it should. So there is when the inks come and play a role. And for this I will be using also another paintbrush which is a fan brush. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint the details here on top with the fan brush and a, a couple of these uh, yeah, drops of water. So again I am using titanium white but not pure. Pure is really extreme. You don't need to have pure titanium white. So this is how a fan brush looks like when it is, well, when it is wet. Okay, so all these, it's like having maybe 20 little brushes like this one here. So in the end, it's, yeah, so it's a lot of little, little brushes going in several directions. So what you don't need to do with a fan brush is to just splatter the color in it like, like, like this because it's going to stick everything together and that's not working. You need to really use it with as little color as possible and only on the tips, not the whole body of the, of the paintbrush. So I am going to start here with tipping just the tips here and now working on the canvas. How I work with it is one thing that is really very uh, ugly to see, as I mentioned earlier, is when you work with patterns. So, uh, for example, a fan brush, you should not use like this, because then you have always these little yeah, curves, which all look the same. So this is, for me, a no-go. You don't need to use the whole fan brush, you can just use some parts. And I'm going to start where it's already light. So to just like drop a little bit the brush here and just spray something towards the top like this so you hardly perceive that there is something going on here but something is going on 
And it is important that you use the, the lightest color that you have used so far and not something that is too contrasting because it needs to blend. Now I changed paintbrush, but I still have the same color that I used at last here. And what I'm going to do here is just go on here and just play. I am going to now get some color. So the whole part, the whole body of the paintbrush will collect color. And I'm going to tip my finger here in this way. The same brush, I will clean it and then I will uh, mix a light yellow, which will be my highlight color. So it is a lemon yellow. It is a very uh, a nice light yellow, but it is uh, semi-transparent. This means that the drops that I'm going to paint on top of my landscape will not be covering unless I uh, mix this with a color that is covering. And Titanium white is covering, so when I mix these two colors together, I will obtain a mixture of a very pale yellow, which will be covering, So, which means that I will see this very light yellow, and it will not be uh, absorbed by the background. And I am going to then start with a couple of, of these effects again with very light yellow. Just a few, because highlights are not supposed to be that many. So that was a very simple way to paint a wave. Hope you liked it. <laughs>